So today we're going to be taking a look in Acts chapter 27, verses 9 through 26. So if you guys uh, have your paper Bibles at this time, uh, wherever you guys are, you guys can open and follow along with me. Or if not, you guys can just listen as I read it to uh, us at this time. So Acts chapter 27, verse 9 to 26. This is what it says. Much time had been lost, and sailing had already become dangerous, because by now, it was after the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo, and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity, so they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed to the lee of a small island called Kata, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbars of Sirtis. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the car cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Amen. Uh, today, I, I want to share with you guys um, <clears throat> from Acts 27, and, you know, I was reading Acts 27 recently, um, in my daily devotion, and, you know, as I was reading this passage, it, it struck me because it reminded me of the situation that we are in. Right now, with COVID-19, the whole world is experiencing this together, right? Both believer and non-believer, all of us are in the same situation where we are stuck in fear and um, so much of a disruption in our lives because of the COVID-19 situation. Um, and so it seems like there's such a, a, a big storm. It's, it's like we're on a big boat and we're in the middle of a storm and we don't know when the storm's going to end. We don't know where the ship is headed. Uh, we don't know if we're actually going to make it through. It seems like everything's just come to a halt, right? And with the COVID-19 situation, it's going worldwide right now. Right? It's not just one country that's affected, it's, it's, it's global. Not only that, in South Korea, we thought it was going to slow down, but you know, just when we thought that it was going to slow down, it, it's continuing to spread still. And so you know, it's a situation where in many ways, it's kind of like this boat where Paul was on with a lot of different um, people. And they were, there were prisoners, there were soldiers, there were sailors, and they were all together. And Paul was a believer. The other people, they were not believers. And yet they were all in this boat together experiencing a storm. And in the midst of the storm, you realize Paul becomes a very prominent figure in the story. He becomes respected. He becomes uh, someone who people look to. He becomes almost a leader figure. But in this story, what I realize is that when the whole world is going through a tough situation, Believers are called 
to be a light. Believers are called to be a light. And so in a time when the COVID-19 situation is calling, uh, is bringing so much uh, difficulty to the whole world, this is a situation where the church is called to be a light. You and I are called to be a light. Now I titled my sermon, City on a Hill, because just like the words of Jesus, right? We're supposed to be salt and light. We're supposed to be like a city on a hill. We're supposed to give light, right? That's the purpose of the church. You know, recently, because of um, Shincheonji and the cult, um, a lot of the re- religious organizations are being scrutinized, right? And especially the church right now is being scr- scrutinized by the Korean government, by the Korean media. And, um, you know, as as tough at it, as it is to be scrutinized by the media, uh, one good thing about it is it's a chance for us to show what the church is like, right? The whole world is watching the church. This is a chance for us to show that the church of Jesus Christ is called to be a light. Amen? And so, you know, I want to share with us from Acts 27, and as we look at the life of Paul, as he goes through the storm with all these prisoners and um, the sailors and the soldiers, we learn what kind of person Paul was, and through that we learn what kind of people we as a church are being called to be in a time of crisis. As we look at the life of Paul, we see that we are called to be a people of love, first of all, and that we're called to be a people of hope when everybody else is full of hopelessness and fear, we're called to be a people of hope. And when people have lost direction, when they've lost vision, we're supposed to be a people of vision. And today, I want to challenge you, YEM. Now, when the whole world is watching the church, we are being challenged to be people of love, people of hope, and people of vision. Amen? You know, uh, we're living in a time where Because of the COVID-19 situation, uh, many nations are uh, kind of walking through uh, a stage of learning. Um, You know, if you know South Korea, South Korea has no concept of personal space, right? If you've ever ridden on a a South Korean subway or a South Korean elevator, you know that there's no such thing as personal space, right? You, You get really, really close with with strangers for the first time when you get on a subway that's uh, during rush hour, right? You get so close with people that it's very uncomfortable, right? Even for South Koreans, it's very uncomfortable. But I know that for countries that really value personal space, man, that experience of being on a subway so close to people is very uncomfortable. But because of COVID-19, right? Now South Korea is going through a time where we're trying to learn what is social distancing, right? What's What's the right, appropriate distance to have between people to ensure that we are hygienic, right? But, you know, one of the things that people are worried about is, you know, if we learn to distance ourselves from other people, is this going to break the fabric of society? Is this going to cultivate selfishness and individualism in people, right? Korea is a very collectivist culture, but is this going to heighten individualism and break that collectivist mindset? You know, as we're looking at South Korea, South Korea is also going through a lot of changes and becoming more and more individualistic, um, especially in the younger generations, right? Back in the day, nobody used to go to the movie theater by themselves. But these days, so many people go to movie theaters by themselves in South Korea too, right? And, you know, for those of you guys who don't understand, in South Korea, people did not used to go to movie theaters by themselves. And... You know, I think, I think this change is a good thing. But at the same time, what you realize is more and more, this generation, this, uh, this culture is becoming more and more a culture about me, right? It's more and more becoming a culture of selfishness and individualism, right? But in a time like that, I want to remind you guys that Yes, it's good to be modern, it's good to follow the trends, it's good to be uh, somebody who knows the times, but at the same time, as the church, you and I as the church, right? When we become followers of Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ is our Lord, that means by definition our DNA can't be 
selfish. We are called to break out of that sinful tendency of selfishness and be people of love. And so when the gospel comes into our hearts, we are transformed to become people who love others. But the question now is, when the whole world is going through a time of selfishness, are you and I any different? Are we the same as everybody else or are we challenging ourselves, right? Are we being transformed by the love of Jesus Christ to love others? I think the COVID-19 situation is a good test, right? You know, in Acts 27, verses 30 to 34, when the ship is going through a crisis and um, there's a storm, right? It looks like the ship is going, going to break. Um, it looks like everyone's going to die. And so there are a few people on the ship. They try to run away by themselves, right? In verse 30, it says, In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the boat. Right, the ship is gonna drown, and you know everybody is everybody's gonna is everyone's gonna die. And here are these sailors; they they try to get onto the lifeboat by themselves and escape and to save their own lives. Right, that's the way that most people are, aren't they? You know, when we're going through a crisis, we don't have the leisure to think about other people. We just think about me, right? You know, but in verse 31, it says, Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it drift away. You know, in the COVID-19 crisis that we're going through right now, one thing we have to really examine is, are we, as the church, are we practicing what it means to be a loving people? You know, you guys who don't know, um, the Daegu incident with the COVID-19 that kind of uh, first started the spread of COVID-19 in South Korea to a, a large extent was started by a gathering of uh, people called Shincheonji, which is a cult, right? And Shincheonji, although they call themselves a church, is not a church. They 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 are a false church. They they are heretical, but. One of the key characteristics about Shincheonji that we're learning as we look into uh, the news and as the government is looking into Shincheonji is they're realizing that Shincheonji is a cult that on the outside acts as if they're a peace-seeking organization, acts as if they are a, a God-loving organization. But at the core, what you see with Shincheonji is it's an organization that only cares about themselves. And most of all, they only care about their leader who is a man named Lee Man He. They think that he is the representation of the Holy Spirit. He's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Right? But the char characteristic of Shincheonji is um, whenever, whenever people go into Shincheonji, what happens is their family lives are broken. Wives, right? That, that go, become a part of the Shincheonji cult. What happens is they neglect their husbands. They neglect their house duties. They neglect even their children. Right? And the cult demands that they give their whole lives, right? In a way that they neglect all of their other responsibilities. And Shincheonji's mentality is only the people that get saved matter. Everybody else, it doesn't matter. I have no time to think about someone else's salvation. Why? Because I need to worry about my own salvation. Right? And you know, in Shincheonji, um, Right now, the government is looking into Shincheonji and trying to figure out all of the members of Shincheonji so that they can um, safeguard people from coronavirus. But as they're doing that, what they're re realizing is that Shincheonji is constantly lying about their members, who their members are. They're trying to cover up their full full numbers. And the reason why they do that is because in Shincheonji, it's allowed, you know, you are allowed to lie. Lying is not seen as a serious thing. In fact, if it if it's... To further the goals of Shincheonji, lying is welcome, right? But the question that I want to ask is, you know, if our faith makes us more selfish, you got you to gotta understand that there's something wrong with our faith. If our faith is making us a more selfish people, I got to challenge you. There, I, 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 I got to let you guys know that that's a wrong faith. The more and more we fall in love with Jesus, the more and more we become the church. You and I are supposed to become more and more people of love. 
people who care for the lost, people who care for the society, people who care for the nation. And if, if it's not, if it's making you and me into more selfish people, then maybe we have got to do something with our faith. Maybe we're going down the wrong road. The church is called to be a people of love, not selfishness. Not only for God's people, but also for greater society and also for the people that are around us who are lost. YEM, are we becoming more and more selfish as a church or are we becoming people of love, people who care about the society around us? You know, in Acts 27, 33 to 34, Paul, what happens is he, he notices that people are not eating. He notices that the people around him have lost hope. And what does he do? It says in verse 33, just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. You know, what you see with Paul is he's not only concerned for his life, he becomes kind of like a shepherd, a leader on the ship. Why? Because he's concerned not only for his life, but the life lives of everybody on that ship. And First Peter 2, in verse 12, tells us, Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but not, do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. You know, with the COVID-19 situation going on, uh, the government is asking uh, people not to meet and gather. And I know that, uh, especially in the church, there are some people who are confused. Like, why is the church not gathering? Why do we have to be, you know, pushed around by the government? But let me, let me remind you guys, that's the wrong attitude to have. In a time when the whole nation is trying to safeguard, uh, stop the spread of coronavirus and try to safeguard people, we as the church need to, we need to honor and respect what the government is trying to do, right? In a time like this, we need to let society know that we too care, right? That we don't want the virus to spread just because we want to gather. And in, in a time like this, what I'm encouraged by is there are so many ways that we can still be the church, even though we're not able to meet in one building, right? And, and in a time like this, when everybody else is just concerned about finding their own masks, right? <laughs> finding their own supplies, uh, getting, making sure that they're able to survive, their own family is okay. We need to be people that open our eyes to the people around us who are not doing okay. That's the call of the church. Why yeah, be exemplary in your love, in your concern for the people around you, for the people in your workplace, for the people in your cells, for the people in your neighborhood. Be exemplary in your love and concern. That's what the church is called to be. You know, I'm so encouraged by one of our sisters. Her name is Sally. Some of you guys know she played the violin for us at YEM. And recently she uh, made this, this uh, chart that shows... Oh, how you can get masks in South Korea. It was a chart that she was sharing uh, to s disseminate to uh, foreigners because a lot of the information that's being sent out is, you know, in Korean. And so for foreigners, it's tough to find uh, masks in South Korea right now with the COVID-19 situation. You know, whenever a mask comes into a, uh, a yakub, it, it, you know, it, it's out immediately right and so how, how do you figure out where you know where to go to get masks and she made this chart that shows exactly you know all the information you need and she was saying she contacted me and she said you know pastor sam can you make sure this goes out to uh people who don't know how to get masks and when i was receiving this chart from sally i was so blessed i was like yes as the church we need to be people that care right not only so that i can get the mask that i need but so that other people who are having it tough that they can find their masks. And I want to encourage you in a time like this, 
The church is supposed to be exemplary. It's supposed to be out in the front lines, being the people that care most about other people. And YEM, let's let's really grow in our love for the people around us. Amen? That's what the church is being called to be. Now, as we look at Paul, we see that the church was called to be a people of love, but we also that know that the church is called to be a people of hope. You know, a lot of times the world is thrown into a state of fear and hopelessness. Whenever there's a crisis, the whole world is stuck in fear and hopelessness. That was the situation on the boat in verse 33, chapter 27, verse 33. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten, eaten anything. Isn't that kind of the way the world is right now, right? Every time you turn on the news, what is the news about? It's about how COVID-19 is still spreading, right? There's seldom good news when you turn on the news, right? Everything is about how hopeless the situation is, how it's spreading, how the deaths, death tolls are rising, how coronavirus is spreading all over to new countries now. You know, in, in this, in this period where COVID-19 is spreading, one of the greatest, uh, greatest consequences actually is fear right the rise of fear and this sense of hopelessness you know but in a time like that the church is called to be a people of hope not to be the same as everybody else not to just follow um this trend of saying you know things are getting worse right corona is just getting worse and worse no we're called to be a people of hope we're called to be the people that say, yes, right now things are bad, but God has it under control. God is going to turn the situation around, right? In verse 34, when people were hopeless, what does Paul do on the ship? He says, now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. You know, everybody on the ship was hopeless. You know, it said that on the ship, right, everybody lost hope. But in that time, you know, people stopped eating. They were like, we're going to die anyway, so why, why eat? And Paul, right? He was among unbelievers. He was among people that were um, not the church, right? These were just unbelievers, and they were all stuck on a ship that was going to sink. And what does Paul do? Hey, guys, eat, right? Cheer up. None of you guys are going to die. You guys aren't going to lose a single hair on your head. God is going to protect you. I have been confirmed by God that we're all going to live. So eat something. And then he takes a piece of bread. He thanks you know, he thanks God for the food. He prays and thanks God for the food. And he eats it. And it encourages the people around them. That's the kind of people we're supposed to be as a church. When the whole world is full of fear. When people are panic stricken, right? When people are so anxious. We as a church are supposed to be people of hope. You know, I'm so blessed by our brothers and sisters at YEM. Um, you guys are great. Uh, one of our brothers in YM, and his name is Philip, and, um, you know, Philip, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, actually, but you guys know Philip, right? He's um, he's the guy who's always on the slides and on the sound, but, um, you know, Philip, ever since the COVID-19 uh, situation has gotten worse in South Korea, he's been doing a prayer, a live prayer session on Instagram uh, every every. Uh, two times every day at lunchtime and in the evening, right? And I'm so blessed, right, to see Philip. And, you know, I, unfortunately, I, I haven't been joining Philip every time, but, you know, it's such a blessing to see Philip always praying, right? And whenever I see Philip, I'm encouraged. And not only that, recently, Philip has been posting, right, good news about coronavirus, you know, usually people post about the bad things. They post about how it's spreading, how, you know, many people are dying, how now it's not just some countries, it's spreading all over the world. But, you know, Philip is spreading um, spreading good news and saying 
the, the vaccine, like we're going to discover it soon. There are a lot of different good leads, right? He's talking about how death tolls are shrinking, you know, in some nations and he's, he's spreading the good news. And when I hear, you know, when I see what Philip is doing, I'm like, yes, this is what the church is supposed to do. We're supposed to lead in sharing hope, right? In telling the world that we don't have to be afraid. Why? Because God has it in control. Man, if we are followers of Jesus Christ, we have the greatest hope of all. There's no need for us to fear. And in a time where everybody is afraid, I want to challenge you guys, YEM, be that person that shares hope with, you, with your neighborhood. Be that person that shares hope in your workplace. You know, doomsday talk is so fun. When people gather and say, woe is me, woe is me. Oh, things are getting worse. It's fun just to spread one more thing that, you know, makes it even worse, right? But in a time like that, why am I want to I want to ask you guys, be that one person that breaks that atmosphere and says, "No, things are getting better. There's hope." Why am we are called to be a people of hope. Amen. And the last thing is we are called to be a people of vision. Right? The world when it goes into crisis is thrown in a state of directionlessness. People don't know where they're going. Right now with the COVID-19 situation, no one knows what the future is going to look like. Everyone is wondering, where is this going, right? In Acts 27 verse 20, on the ship, they were in a similar situation. It says in verse 20, When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. They were on a ship and their way of navigating was to look at the sun and the stars and the moon and to figure out where they were. But they couldn't find the sun and the stars. It was like they, they had no idea where they were headed. Not only this, that, the storm was not ending. And these people were like, oh, there's no direction left. Everything is hopeless. You know, that's kind of the way it is right now with COVID-19, right? People are, people are wondering, are we ever going to get out of this? It seems like it's going to be for forever, for at, for a really long time at least. You know, because so many people are stuck at home, it heightens the feeling that the world is at a standstill and that we're never going to get out of this. But I want to remind you guys that this is just a period. And, you know, no matter how long the duration is, this is all within God's hand, right? The church of you know, the church needs to be certain of this. And when you look at Paul, man, I'm so blessed, right? Paul was a man of vision, even in the midst of a sh ship about to sink, right? He never lost vision. You know, if, if you guys know kind of where it is in Acts 27, Paul is actually going to Rome because he appeals to Caesar, right? Um, he was going to be, uh, the, the Jews were saying, let, let us kill uh, Paul and Paul, you know, because um, the situation was getting worse, he appeals to Caesar. And Paul, he always wanted to go to Rome. And so in Paul's vision, he knew I need to go to Rome to do God's work there. And even though the ship was going to, it looked like it was going to sink, even though things were very uh, depressing in that time, I'm sure in the middle of that storm, Paul also would have been very disheartened, right? But in a time like that, Paul had one certainty. He knew, my mission is not done yet. God's going to send me to Rome. So I'm not afraid. That's what he says in verse 22. He says, but now I urge you to keep up your courage. He's saying this to the, uh, the people who are disheartened. Because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. He says, last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Man, you know, even though we're going through tough times, I wish that you and I, the church, would be people of vision people that are unshaken by the crises in our lives. Why? Because we know God has a mission in my life. I'm not done yet. God is going to take me there. And even though I'm in a tough time now, it doesn't matter because I'm going to make it through. 
Because God is going to bring me through this. YM, let's be the people of vision in a time when people are directionless. Amen? Be that person who's so certain that this is going to come to end, that God has this under control. When you talk to the people in your neighborhood, when you talk to the people around you, be that person. Be people of vision. Amen?